In this video, I'm going to interview a bunch of people who've bought Zometica and show you their perspective. And all I ask is that you like the video, subscribe and join the notification squad. So let's get into it. So how did you first find out about the Brown Gent channel? I found out about the channel um, doing some research on some of my investments that I'm currently holding on my um, portfolio. Well, I basically went on YouTube and I wanted to see what other people were talking about for Zometica. And I came across your video first. Uh, I found your video several times, several different videos on Zometica. So I clicked on that one. I watched it. I really like what you had to say, but I really wanted to see what other people are saying as well. I use different platforms to look for information other than what I already found myself. So Reddit would be one, YouTube would be another. I guess I typed in, I'm not sure if it was Zometica or any other stock that I had on my portfolio at the time. And then you popped up. I noticed, you know, you did a great job with your, your thumbnails and how you carry yourself in your video. So, you know, I decided to listen in and uh, I like how you broke down um, information that you found. And, you know, you're different than the other YouTubers. That's why I wasn't, you know, afraid of actually doing this interview. Because I've noticed there's a large group of YouTubers or even, I guess, TikTokers that would uh, just spread false information to new investors. You know, and most of the time it's going to be an older individual or very young person that has no idea what they're getting involved in. And they're expecting to get a certain price for a stock that they might never even, you know, see or they're holding on for their life because of this new diamond hands movement that's, you know, going on currently right now. <laughs> so uh, I noticed that you were very transparent and I support that kind of uh, transparency. You know, I started out as a blogger initially, uh, did some internship work for world star this is 50. i then branched on to do my own thing around the year 2010. got my feet wet in the the, the google analytics the google adsense game uh youtube was then very was a, was a huge part of my uh my income at the time being in college and stuff like that as far as the internet goes i'm I'm pretty good at knowing what's hot, what's good, what's not. That's kind of what got me into investing, um, noticing different uh, companies that you use every day, you know, being traded and feeling stupid for missing out on it, you know, um, not really taking any advantage on you knowing it earlier than the, the public does. And then hearing others actually making money doing that. And I believe uh, most people feel like, especially in those times, um, that only a selected few could actually trade. You know, it wasn't open to the public and it's not all the way true. So I initially I started investing into stuff like Nike and different companies that I actually like that I use on a regular basis. And um, fast forward till now, I mean, I guess you could consider me kind of like, a, I wouldn't say a pro, but I'm pretty good. <laughs> I'm pretty good at finding companies that are good for the long term. I'm not a fan of day trading at all. I hate it. When and how did you find out about Zometica? Uh, I found out about Zometica at the beginning of this year, um, January of this year, through a guy named Chris Singh, which the guy is a joke, so just beware of that. I found Zometica about a year ago. Um, unfortunately, it was when the pump was happening, uh, when, when they first started to pump it up as kind of like a meme stock. I kind of fell into that hole a little bit, I'll be honest. Uh, but now I really, really like the company. I really don't think it's a meme company like everybody says. I view it as just like a really real company. Well, I do a lot of scraping, looking for different gems. And at the time, uh, a few of my colleagues actually was talking about it and it was actually less than a dollar. It was probably near this price now. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure. And I missed out on it because I had a couple of other investments that I was involved in. I seen it explode past a dollar and I, I forgot what month it was. And I think it was... December, Jan, like last year? Uh, actually, no, I think it was a lot or, uh, later than that. I think it was earlier this year. Okay, probably Jan, Feb, because March was like... Yes. It was probably around then because I, I had just got out of some of my GameStop positions at that time. Nice. And then, I mean, that was, I have stories about that for days, but uh, these on Medica, I saw actually when I, when I first bought it, I was in the lower dollar range and then it exploded to about two something at that time. What exactly piqued your interest in Zometica? The fact that I'm a pet owner and the release of True Forma is what really got me interested in this company. Um, I never really invested too much before until I saw Zometica and I threw some money at it. I wanted to see how it would go. I actually lost my money, but it really just floored my interest on the investing strategies uh, that are out there and 
just how I can retire better, I guess you can say, or build a financial stability. How old are you, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, 27 years old. Oh, wow. You're already thinking about that, eh? Yes. <laughs> Based on what you were saying, you, you joined in when the hype first started. So were you in around February, March when the launch was kind of brought up a few weeks early? Yes, sir. I was. And you never considered selling any shares, right? Um, it was it was pretty hard uh, not to when it got to around like two dollars or so. But I really wanted to keep it in there. I really believe in this company. I think it should be well over two dollars in my in my opinion on what the product can actually do. I did consider selling, uh, but I wanted to keep it in there and see where I can go in the future. So how many shares did you have back then? Because I noticed your average is like 86 cents, you said, or something like that? Um, I didn't have as much back then. Uh, I would say around 5,000 shares. So you've averaged down recently then? or Yes. After. Okay. I'm not going to lie to you. At that time when I bought in, it was based on FOMO, you know? <laughs> oh, good. A lot of people have done it, right? So Right. Exactly. <laughs> it's just like, you know what? Like I do it sometimes too. It's just I can try to catch myself and... Even if I FOMO, like I call it like anchoring, you know, so I can get a yeah. few shares and not feel bad, you know? But, exactly. Yeah. Um, it, it wasn't much at the time. I didn't put that much into it at the time. I just recall going back and forth with different investors that had it and they were very happy to be involved in it. So I, I felt like I had something really good. And when I started doing my research on it, I realized, okay, it seems like a pretty good product. And then I don't know, man, it just started really falling. And I started looking deeper and deeper and I started realizing, man, there's a lot of shares here. There's not a lot of transparency on the side of the company. You know, they're not really putting out enough information or news on a regular basis to allow investors or potential customers to know what exactly their product is. You have to learn from it from word of mouth, which isn't, you know, too good. You know what I mean? Yeah, no, it's horrible. It's, it's pretty bad. I had sold and I rebought back in on one of those uh, up and down days. So my average is about a uh, dollar and 20 cents right now. So when did you sell? Did you sell when they, because I remember sometime, I think it was March, uh, that they, they launched like maybe two weeks early and then they said they didn't have everything, right? Uh, March. It might have been February or March. Did they, they launched True Forma like one or two weeks early and they said, okay. We don't have all the assets in place, but we're gonna launch. It's like, wait, why? Every day before that, the stock was like going up like five or ten percent, right? Exactly. Yeah. Most of the, the new investors are involved now. I guess they invest more on hope than actual analysis, which is the part that really hurts. You know, when stocks drop. <laughs> yeah. I recall even going to a barber shop and they were talking about investing on there. I guess GameStop and AMC were really big. Um, even for those that know nothing about investing, they had to, you know, have a conversation about it. And Zometica popped up and my barber actually had purchased it with a few of his colleagues. Based on what he was telling me, I was letting him know at that time. This was, I think, either May or June of this year. I think we were still around the 70, 80 cent mark. And then we had a really good pump day where it touched a dollar again and then went back down. He went all in with all his money that he doesn't really have much of. And... <laughs> He was just telling me that I don't, he doesn't think it's going to go any lower than I told him. It's going to break the 80 cent mark. It's going to go down to 70 cents. Unfortunately, it might even hit 50 cents the way we're going now. There's not enough volume. There's not enough news. There was a lot that was going on at the time. So um, yeah, my average is about $1.20 right now. How many shares do you have right now? I started in January when I first heard it. And I like the fact that the release of the two forma. So I decided to buy 2,000 shares of um, Zometica. While Chris saying, telling all his YouTube followers that this thing's going to hit the moon, when it hit $2.85, I said, there's no way this thing's going to hit the moon. It ran up so fast that it has to come back down and decided to sell all my shares while this f***ing joker decides to tell everybody and continue telling everybody that it's going to go to the moon. Well, guess what? It went back down. I decided to nibble back at $1.80. So I bought back in and bought a thousand shares at $1.80. And again, it ran back up and sold it again at, I believe I sold it, let me check, at $2.55. Actually, I sold all my shares at $2.55. Did a little bit more research, ran into the Brown Gen channel and decided to nibble and now I'm currently holding 2,000 shares with an average cost of 69 cents. 
currently I have 14,000 shares at 0.86 average. Uh, so, you know, I'm down a ton right now in the company, but I really believe in this company. And from what I'm seeing now that release today, I, I can only say there's going to be progress down the road. Currently 300,000. Wow. Yeah. It's a lot of shares. I can send you the screenshot. <laughs> I believe you. I believe you. Yeah. How much does Zometica make up of your investment portfolio? Companies like this, I don't really like to invest too much in risky companies like Zometica. So it's only 2% of my portfolio. And currently right now, it's 92% of my portfolio. What's the other 8%? Um, a couple of little stocks like Disney and uh, just other stocks that I've been I really that looking funny that you call Disney the little stock. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Disney is actually a really huge stock, but it's kind of little in my portfolio because I really enjoy looking at Zometica and I invest a lot of time into it. 92% is your current uh, portfolio weighting of Zometica. Would you ever consider buying any more? And what would it take you to buy more Zometica shares? Um, absolutely, yeah. I'm trying to buy every day. Um, I just see things that are coming out every day that I like about them. Uh, recently, they just filed the AK, I'm sure you know, uh, they just filed that. And that's just something I'm gonna have to go and read more about. Probably on Monday, I'll be striking it more. Well, I, I have a lot of uh, burger fi as well. I would say maybe 20%. Okay, and the rest of your portfolio, is it safer, I hope? They're all hit as well. They're pretty much like, uh, to give you an example, I got a uh, burger fi at around a $10 mark, and now it's floating around $7. Pretty much everything that I have is in the red, except for maybe three or four different companies that I got later on. Mm -hmm. And I believe like, um, I went away for a vacation in June, to kind of like, you know, sometimes you got to take a break and restart your your thought process on investing because, yeah. you know, the hedge funds and different people, they they tend to change their strategies every now and then as well, how they short companies. And I noticed that they're doing like what I would call Operation Hope, which is where uh, a stock would you know start pumping on a regular day or pre-market. And then people would buy in on the hope and yeah, it's going to the moon. And the next thing you know, it's down four or five dollars in two weeks and you're holding on to a bag that you have absolutely no idea what you're holding on to. So in my portfolio, everything that I have now, I know for three to five years, I'm going to be holding a lot of shares. I'm not going to sell anytime soon. What are your thoughts on the company's latest earnings reports? And what are you hoping to see from future ones? The company's horrible. I mean, I don't understand how come a, a company pay a Salesforce team thousands, millions of dollars to sell one unit of True Forma per quarter. Where is this company located? And I'd like to get a job there and sell two units and go on vacation the rest of the quarter. I mean, come on, really? Two, one unit per quarter? What the f are they Are they on vacation most of the time? I think anybody could sell one unit per quarter. Next quarter, they'll sell two, you know, hopefully. Three, four, that could be a surprise for me. I wasn't really expecting much, uh, like you said, from quarter two and quarter three. I know they're still trying to get the product out there to vets and their essays are starting to get out. But in the future, I really expect some big earnings uh, now that we acquired PulseVet and now that we're starting to get out there a little bit more and people are starting to notice the True Former platform. So hopefully we can really get really exciting results from quarter four how many <laughs> units do they have to sell for you to be happy with q4 uh, uh, you know what would really make me happy is is more than they sold at the more last quarter more than one <laughs> and more than more than one would make me happy but, <laughs> you know it's progress it okay. takes time but that would that would actually make me happy hmm? i mean they've made a few changes that um okay with as far as how they've done them at selling the actual product that we're all excited for that was a horrible job um i believe the last two quarters they've only sold a handful i'm not i don't remember the exact amount they, they sell one true forma unit per quarter hopefully right. q4 i'm like looking at a fourth unit you know what i mean like and it, it's shocking because their competition um i've looked at them a lot as well you no know, these products are very expensive so i was thinking towards true forma where they can perhaps lower the price or 12 1,500 per something like something like that per unit, but maybe it's like 40 or 50 tests and you break even on the unit. 
Wow. You okay. Pass, you could pass on the expense of the cartridge. You would give it to them at one fifth the cost. So these tests cost, I think, on average, a thousand dollars. The cartridges, even if you charge two hundred per test, within forty to fifty tests, you're you're good. Trueform has paid off. And exactly. That's, that's the value proposition they should be saying. Your consumer has no idea how much these cost. They just know it went from a thousand to two hundred to get the same info, right? right. And also ten minutes or fifteen minutes for the test. Exactly, exactly, exactly. I mean, they do a good job at explaining that on their website and certain videos that they have on their website. But as far as how they're selling it and their sales team, I mean, from what I've seen from most investors that I speak to, they're very confused on how they have a sales team and we're noticing money being spent from the cash. <laughs> oh, yeah. And everybody's getting paid, but yet they haven't been able to sell any products. I mean, if you're a sales team and you have three months to sell a product, you can do better than selling just one, especially during a pandemic. I'm not going to lie. I got a little worried seeing those things. One thing that always keeps you, I guess, grounded is when you find out the other major companies or not companies, but um, holders that actually hold the company itself that they're doing. Some have actually purchased more. Some have actually sold, but they haven't really moved from their position. And when I look, they're holding at over a dollar. They own a million plus shares of this company. They're not moving anywhere anytime soon. As long as they don't sell, I mean, we know for a fact the company's not going to go to zero at this point. So what do you do? Do you buy the dip? Do you wait? Normally, if you're not, if you're afraid to buy the dip, then you have no conviction. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah, you, you know, you believe the company's not actually a great investment, so you take okay. your loss and run for the hills. Or if you continue to buy the dip, is that your ego talking to you? Or have you done a great analysis to realize that, you know, you got, you're onto something that's just, uh, you're in probably maybe too early at the time. It's in the early stage of development. How long is that gonna take for them to actually get it right? Do you have to hold it for three years, two years, five years? <laughs> you know what I mean? I think that some people, I think the mistake, oh, I don't know if it's a mistake, but I think a lot of people don't take advantage of the fact that they can buy in buy in lower and then, right. then it goes up a tiny bit because you can look at the chart you can easily flip what you dip bought and still make money and I, I think i talk about that quite a bit in the videos that i make and i'm not saying to just sell zometica shares because i don't believe in it i think that while we're in these spots where zometica dips lower so like we just went to 30 cents 32 cents right right I zometica shares at 35 cents and i bought it at 43 cents like two weeks before that right okay when when those shares go by 50 cents i'm liquidating all 4,000 shares that i bought a lot of people will just go oh, i don't want to buy anymore but then once it goes to 70 cents they're like wait a second i changed my mind i believe exactly in yeah. exactly kind of a little confusing right you're like right so you didn't believe in it when it was down but now that it's going up you believe and that just tells me they only look at the green or red candlestick and go green i believe red i don't what would you say to somebody who's on the fence about investing in this company? Well, if you're like me, I'm a gambler. I like risky companies like Zometica, and it's cheap to buy a lot of shares. And when it runs up to the moon, you can make a lot of money. But again, be careful because they're risky companies. These companies could go down to two cents, one cent, five cents. We just don't know. But when it runs up, it runs up. But Otherwise, I wouldn't risk too much into this company. Um, well, you know, scared money don't make money. So uh, now it's time to buy. Monday probably is going to be a big day for Zometica as they just released a lot of news. So hopefully people can start getting on that train. I don't want it to be a pump and dump again, but yeah, if, if you really do your DD and you really look through these videos on YouTube like yours, you can really find some great information. I mean, can you get any lower than this at this point? I don't know. Can it go any lower? I'm not exactly sure. I've been hearing that a lot, even when it was 50 cents, so. <laughs> you know what I mean? I thought 50 was going to be our support for the next quarter, and I, I guess I was wrong about that. Um, we're way past that now. To be fair, I think a lot of that has to do with the market sentiment, right? Like all those negative catalysts, those tax loss harvesting, we have Omicron, like a lot of these stocks are like getting crushed, right? Like stocks exactly. are- way more established than Zometica have been getting absolutely destroyed, right? Yeah. Then yeah. you have a stock like Zometica that in a high inflation period, you know, the market has moved to wanting money now. They want to see revenues now. And this company is like every quarter, like, don't worry, we'll sell one more unit. It's like, of course, they're going to get crushed. I, I believe they made a switch in their CEO as well a couple of months ago. They did. So, I mean, 
I was looking at how people reacted to that and they were pretty happy. And I also met a guy, um, he had actually bought in very, very early on. And he had almost, I'm gonna find the actual screenshot. I know it was either a million shares yeah. and he, he could have sold it at $2 on that, you know, that pump time. He yeah. held on, he's still holding on to this day. He has not sold. So I'm he's not up, exactly sure. He's still up, but not as much, I guess. Yeah, yeah, he sold up, but not as much, which kind of hurts, you know, because um, you could have sold out a profit. And I mean, that happens to the best of us. I could have sold many of my stocks actually at a dollar or two profit. And, um, you know, you go to get something to eat, you come back and you're down two dollars. It's like you can't move sometimes, you know what I mean? <laughs> and is there anything else that you'd like to share? Can I talk about the 8K that just released? Sure. As people know, uh, Zometica recently filed an 8K uh, with PulseBets revenue. Um, so with doing the math roughly, you can see about a 940,000 a month uh, revenue for about the first nine months. So if you do 940,000 a month times three months and the last quarter's revenue, which is 28,000, it's about a 10,000% increase in the next quarter four earnings. So that's what I want to tell people. Retail investors really believe in this company and want to see it succeed. When we don't have the transparency behind what's going on, it kind of sucks. But yeah, like, we, we need some communication from Zometica. We need some like PR or something that says what they're doing behind the scenes. There's a lot of psychology there. I mean, I've noticed um, especially on these different stock sites that I, you know, look for information on. And I guess people believe that every day should be a green day. Yeah. And when it's not a green day, it's pretty bad. They believe there's a scam going on and market makers are manipulating it or they hate shorts. But a lot of times shorts actually help, um, you know, people with a lot of money get things at a value they believe the company is valued at. And they'll buy there all the way and ride it all the way up and get out when they need to. But retail investors believe that, you know, um, every company is going to the moon you know and that's a huge issue uh, <laughs> it's gonna cost a lot yeah. of people a lot of money and uh, that's why i wanted to come on here today and actually talk to you about that because i mean that's that's like a, it's like a crisis right now well it's it's a lie being perpetuated by the biggest holders right and i think diamond hands and you know holding to the moon works when you're in profit so people buy it at 20 cents yeah. it's medica goes 30 cents they're willing to hold it but once it goes to 19 cents they start going wait a second do i really want to let go they're more than happy to let people jump in after them and tell them you don't sell because as long as they don't sell they'll right. never get close to their price and they'll always have profit it's almost like the stock market and some of these stocks have turned into a ponzi scheme where like you convince people to buy in higher than you and never sell and if they never sell you're always gonna have a cushion and i don't exactly like and that's happening a lot in the crypto space. And I actually opened my eyes to it a lot more, mm -hmm. especially with the Dogecoin and the, oh you know, my the God. Like, and, yeah. If you look at any of the videos that I've made on any of these stocks in the past, the biggest problem with YouTube in communicating this stuff is people take it offensively. Like when I yeah. tell people, hey, consider taking profits, like even on stocks that I am a huge believer in, like ChargePoint. When ChargePoint hit 27, 28, I said, hey, I'm selling and going down to 100 out of 400 shares. And that was like a month ago. And I said, you know what? I'm doing this because I had made a plan at the start. I started buying in at 21 or 22, went to 17, I bought some more. And as we went all the way up, I started selling, right? When yeah. 27, 28, I'm like, guys, make sure you're clocking in profits. I see comments, no way, like I'm waiting for 35, whatever. And guess what? We're at $19 yeah. again. And guess, guess who? is buying back in. I bought back in today. Exactly. People still have it and they are actually down. I, I, I can't believe it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, as long as they don't blame you for that, I mean, that that's one of the, the tough parts of being someone that actually does videos on YouTube or social media uh, is that you give your opinion on certain things and you give a disclosure. Hey, be careful. I'm not a financial, financial advisor. Yeah. <laughs> um, sell at your own risk, buy at your own risk. And people are just going to, you know, I, I follow this one guy. He does trades every day on uh, options trading and uh, people actually shadow trade him every day. They don't actually do any analysis on their own. They follow every, they pay for his subscription service and they shadow trade him every single day. For me, I'll be very terrified of doing that because yeah. even on companies that I believed on, I've lost money on certain times buying contracts. And there's times where I made a lot of money on it, buying contracts. 
I had to learn, you know, how to not use so much money investing in certain things and when the time the market and stuff like that. That's things you got to learn by being burnt and being stupid on your own. <laughs> I just wanted to thank all of the interviewees again for their participation. And if you'd like to get to know them better, I've included their social media contacts in the description below. So that pretty much does it. I hope you got something out of this video, seeing how others view this company as well, not just me. Make sure that you check out the video on the end screen if you want to learn more about Zometica and I'll catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.